I got into Pilates because the wife started doing it. I never really thought about it. Um, never really seen. I didn't know about it to know what it could do for me. And I know for me, I needed my core and my foundation a lot stronger. I didn't like it at first because it was it was work. It was more work on top of the work that I was already doing. So uh, who want to keep working? But you got to get past that. You got to make sure, uh, for me, it was just seeing once I was consistent, how it even helped me with lifting weights, squatting the right way because I'm using my core now instead of my back. Um, learning how to claw the ground with my feet. Uh, little details that you kind of let slip away because of you just used to a certain way. Culture of what I'm used to doing and being attacked a little bit because it was telling me that I need to switch some things that I thought I was doing right. Two, one. <laughs> Whatever you choose to do, make sure it's a lifestyle. Three, two, one. Make sure you enjoy the struggle because if you don't love it, it's definitely not gonna love you back. Sometimes it don't love you back, but you just gotta keep pushing. If it's really your dream to get to this place or anywhere, just make sure you don't quit. Football is extremely important for me. My dream is to be in the NFL. It always has been since I was younger, so it's very important to me. I take my craft very seriously. got to be on point. It's not like you can't make mistakes, but you got to learn from them. You can't keep making the same mistakes, especially when you hear from other people and they're trying to tell you before you actually be at a point of no return sometimes off decisions. Pilates because I feel like I did, I could do more and like standing up straight and stretching more and having more strength and ability in my back and my shoulders and my hips. I just needed to fix my tennis elbow problem that I had and we decided to come here. I feel good. I feel like I learned a lot of doing this. This is how small the world is. It's another studio in Michigan. And on the Graz website, they do a great job with showcasing where teachers are located. And Cheryl was teaching Brandon in Michigan, where he's from. And then she said, hey, I have this player who's coming, never knew me. She just found me on a Graz website. I think it was a newsletter that they had posted at the time. And she was like, I'd love for you to meet um, his wife and you know, and then him, and he works uh, for the Eagles and maybe you'd kick it off. After a while, you start to feel like you're a lot stronger than the first day, uh, and then you start to push yourself even more to be able to lift your chin off your off your chest or tuck your chin in, uh, keep your legs tight or your feet. But uh, it's been fun now. When players first come in here and they come to take a lesson, if they've never taken Pilates before. We work heavily on the entire body. So right there is just that level of concentration that they're used to, that they snap into. And um, by the time they're finished with their workouts, they are usually blown away. 
by the amount of concentration, the amount of uh, stretching that they get out of it with coupling in strength in the exercises. So it's not just stretching, it's a stretch and strength because it's under a tension of springs. And then the level of control you have to have to balance your body in all these different positions. So um, it kind of leaves them hungry and wanting to come back for more. I started doing Pilates my 11th grade year. I remember my first time doing Pilates. We all came in here and we just did a big session. It was a very fun experience. That's why I kept coming back. I remember my first training with Malik. I had a soft opening for my studio, which is about two years old right now, Core Love Culture. And one of the moms introduced us to Miss Nicole. And I actually paired kids with teachers and they got to teach these college kids Pilates during my soft opening, which was really fun to see and recognize. I love it. Um, I don't like it, I love it. It's, it's amazing here. She's an excellent teacher. I said to Malik, and I always talk to people before we start, I said, um, what do you want to be known for when you continue through your practice? And he says, I just want to be great. And right then and there, I just knew that this kid is something special. And then when I met his parents, I was like, dang, he's just a seed down from greatness of them too. What an honor it is to travel this journey with him. So he and I have to coordinate now. He's not in high school, he's in college. And um, we make sure that he still gets his practice in. My first impression on Pilates was, it was very hard for me. Like extremely hard for me. Like even though I was flexible, it was still hard to do some of the things. But um, with the right teacher, you'll definitely be able to learn and enhance and, and get much better like how I did. I was already flexible before I came here, but she definitely enhanced my flexibility and made me even more flexible to become faster on the field. You know, sometimes I would come here, you know, stressed and things like that. You know, me and Miss Nicole, we would talk. And then we get to the Pilates session, and then I won't be like way more relaxed than I was when I first came in. So that definitely helps. This Gratz equipment is very important for this practice because it is a tool. It's a tool that allows you to have something pushing your shoulders down. So now you have feedback here something you're pressing your head into, and then your back into, and then your lower part of your back into, so you have feedback on your whole spinal chain, right? Then you also have feedback on the, you know, the quadratus lateral muscles in your backside, right? So that's where your power comes from when you go to use your arms. And then you have feedback, which is super important on your feet. The foot bar is ideal for, for waking up all the pressure points on the bottom of your feet. You know, it's kind of like reflexology in the day. So you're doing reflexology within your work Workout. Who does that? You're getting someone to hold your legs with the straps, right? Now you have these straps that are helping you pick your bottom up so that you can stretch your back. Some of these guys are 365 pounds, 6'4". Some guys are like 6'6", 285. So if I had to be here to hold their arms and their legs, game over for me, you know? So I use all of these tools to help me um, guide them through their practice. Or I should say help them guide themselves through their practice. Because you can do this by yourself. Now, the trick is don't get lazy with the tools, right? Understand that the tools are there for you to use them and then take yourself away from those tools and put it back into what your personal practice is or what your professional practice is. So have a good healthy balance between the two, but yeah, without these tools, I couldn't do what I do. The equipment is, is crazy. She knows how to, you know, work the equipment in many different ways. And that's why I also like to come here as well. If I started this early, my game would be a lot more advanced, I feel, because I'll have more control of my body. Um, and you educate yourself on your body too. You know, it's all about the education of learning yourself, learning your body. And now I know where the problem is and why certain things ain't happening. And so I can work on those. I started at like age six 
and first I played flag for three years and then I wanted to move on to tackle and the first game I got hit once and I was like, no, I, I don't want to do this. When I was coming down the sideline and a kid was just running straight, I just let him go. And then I went to my parents and they were like, why didn't you tackle him? And I was like, uh, I'm, I'm scared, I don't want to do that. My parents, they just said, keep trying. And then that's what I did. And we did more training going on and I felt better. The main thing that I focus on with them is their feet, right? Connecting their foundation, their feet to their seat, foot to glue activation, right? Because if you travel the chain of energy all the way up from your feet to your glutes, all the way up through your back, all the way through your neck, that's like huge for their practice because they use every ounce of that, right? Especially with the helmets being about two pounds heavy. Making sure that I am super in tune what their feet are doing to what their back is doing. Maybe they're, you know, quarterback and maybe our practice is um, focus on strengthening their back so that they, they can throw better. Maybe they're front man, you know, um, DT, and maybe their feet, they're recognizing, dang, I'm being pushed over. Well, why are you being pushed over? Because you don't have abs in your feet. Your feet have no connection to the rest of your body, so there goes somebody pushing you, right? So I try and really pinpoint what a person is doing, like what their practice is, what their uh, profession is, what position they play, and I try and work around that so that you can actually take these exercises back onto the field, right? So imagine when you do with them and then do without them and then how much more power you have in your own personal practice. After the first time I've started Pilates throughout the years, it has gotten easier and much easier for me. Uh, I would recommend Pilates to other football players because for one, you need to be in tune with how to really fire up your muscles, like deeper muscles that you probably never even knew you had. Um, and if you want to just get full body control, uh, I feel like Pilates can help you. And on the football field, it's all about being able to absorb and deliver hits. And so to be able to put your body in a position uh, to get those things done, I think Pilates can definitely uh, get you a little more nimble and flexible uh, to be able to put yourself in, in positions where some people, they, they won't even be able to see, especially in my position, because you got to be able to bend and, and get under guys and stay, stay low. Um, and so I think um, being able to use your core and being able to fight against pressure and different rotations that you tend to put your body through uh, to try to get to the ball carrier or whatever you're doing at the time, a move that you might be doing, um, it, it definitely helps you. I would definitely recommend Pilates to other athletes because it will not only help you on the field, but it'll help you mentally. integrity of stretch, strength, and control, right? Already what you do, focus, determination, you know, precision. Like those are the type of things you wanna look for that help your performance enhancement. So if my story alone doesn't help you recognize that this is good, you know, just find for yourself what's gonna make you a better athlete. And then I get to watch people, you know, come from such a young age of, you know, 10, all the way up to 32 right now in pro world, see how they feel this work still in their body and how much it can help them with their own personal practice. But this practice is not just for athletes, right? We, we work it in so many different ways. I get to train people who have Parkinson's down to people who have muscular dystrophy, down to people who, you know, just have five kids and want to be in great shape. Um, but it really definitely changes the game in your personal practice if you use your body, which is your own personal tool um, for your profession. So give it a try, because I guarantee you, you will love it.